Hello again, and we're back here at the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner for this week, and we'll gonna dis we're going to discuss a uh, fairly typical case with a lot of horses. Uh, this particular horse that we'll be doing today is, is travels base narrow behind. He has some slight hawk issues as well as some stifle, but most importantly, he's got a sore back. And uh, this has been going on for some time. Part of it is because of his confirmation. And it seems to be exacerbated in almost every situation with the extra leverage that is caused by allowing his toe to become longer than it should be. And these are things that we are just now beginning to get a handle on. Uh, what we used to think was normal actually was, was uh, as far as length of toe, was actually much longer than what we're seeing now as being efficient for these athletic individuals, especially in ground that's quite forgiving. Uh, we're talking about arena horses, roping horses, barrel horses, and things like that. So uh, practically any horse that works in an arena that is base narrow is subject to this type of condition. And so with that, we're gonna go ahead and get a look at him, see how he travels, and see if we uh, see where we're at with being able to deal with these excessive leverages. As you can see, as he places his foot on the ground and bears weight on it, passes over it, the hawk uh, deviates to the lateral side. In soft ground, this becomes uh, a worsened situation, and particularly if he was a rope horse under, <laughs> under strain where he might be uh, pulling a steer or roping a calf or stopping. Okay, this is a view of the hoof print in this yielding surface that he's walking on here. The uh, lateral toe quarter is is giving into the ground and obviously if there's added activity to this it's going to exacerbate the situation therefore the hawk is going to be suffering um, with each step that this horse takes and that reflects directly into the back and um, and that's a real common thing with a lot of performance horses whether they're uh, jumping horses or just Western or English pleasure horses, they, these horses have a similar pathology in their structures as a result of the ground not being properly supported underneath of them. This is a typical confirmation of a foot with this type of uh, traveling condition. If it, it, the general appearance of that foot appears to be much higher and longer on the inside and uh, it seems to be a deficit on this lateral side, especially now that it's broken away a little bit. The common thing that we do as farriers, or at least the things that we've been taught, is to lower this inside edge, leave what we can here, and build a shoe that has a lateral extension and or even put a trailer on that. And uh, that mechanically makes sound uh, like a sound decision to make. But if you look at the bottom of the foot, and we'll go back and look at that, and you'll see that Mother Nature has already taken care of the foot. The problem that oftentimes uh, arrives with this type of foot and the activities that horses do is that the toe gets longer than it should be and the leverage uh, seems to throw the leg to this lateral side. What we're finding is, is that just shortening this lever arm helps to stabilize the whole bony column all the way through and all the way to the back. So we're going to take a look at this horse. Obviously, he's, uh, he's got some lateral flexion in his foot. He's got a little puffiness right here. Uh, whether that contributes to his, uh, to his condition or not. But if you... Uh, This is a fairly common situation for horses that have hawk and stifle problems. And you can see that it uh, doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get, get him to respond. He certainly is uncomfortable. There's some, uh, a lot of different areas in his back that, uh, that he's yielding to. And I'm not a chiropractor, but uh, I have become familiar with some of the back pain uh, just being able to palpate some of these areas and then making an approach to reducing that lever 
and uh, helping with this back pain. And this is something that I find it's important for farriers or horse owners uh, to become acquainted with is to know what you can do down here to help these subtle uh, conditions up here in the upper part of the back. So uh, let's uh, hope that we can uh, uh, make some changes down below and help this guy get around some of his discomforts here in his back. Okay. We're going to approach this foot just like we do any of the others as far as finding the widest part of the foot, mapping it out. And that's real helpful in every situation to see if any problems might be arising. Uh, we'll exfoliate the areas along through the quarters. And the purpose in this is to be able to draw a line right on the area of the lamina. With that, we're going to be able to look at the widest part of the foot, put the rasp right down the center, lay it over to the side, and then move it exactly lateral without varying from this center line. And what we're going to find is, is that there seems to be the widest part of that arc. We're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to move it laterally, and that appears to be the widest part of that arc. Now, if we connect these two dots, we'll see that this line comes, intersects right through where the bars seem to end or at least that's where that swell is, and it's about one inch back from the apex of the frog. Now it looks a bit crooked on here, and I think this is what you're going to find consistently with these type feet. If you recall earlier, I mentioned Mother Nature had this figured out ahead of time and tries to compensate for this. If you look at the distance here of the widest part of the foot, you'll see there's approximately one inch, or less than a thumb's width actually, uh, of extra foot beyond the rasp again down the center line and I've got over a thumb's width on this lateral side. And this has been the misconception about evaluating these type of feet simply because we've never really looked at it from this perspective, bisecting the foot not only from a cross section at the widest part and seeing how much extra length there is in the front. There's nearly two rasp widths forward and only one rasp width back. And that's a lot for a horse like this. Looking at that foot, you say, well, that's not a bad looking foot. The proportions are not too bad. Certainly, what Mother Nature has offered this horse is a wider lateral side of its foot to accommodate for the conformation that there is. The problem that arises so consistently is that this distance, even though it may appear short, actually is longer than it should be. And for performance horses, we're finding that if we can offer them a shorter lever here, we minimize and almost eliminate back problems, stifle and hawk problems. Welcome back to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. We will continue where we left off last time with working on this horse with a base narrow hind end and some traveling issues. If you remember, this horse tended to fall off the lateral toe and had some stifle, hock, and back pain because of it. We've roughly mapped out the foot and will now continue with further evaluation and trimming. Okay. I'm going to go through the procedures of trimming this foot. As you can see, there's very little to nothing that has to be taken off. But one thing that I always do, and I strongly urge everyone to do this, is, is uh, clean these two areas of the foot because it's going to allow you to get your ass back here and get those heels trimmed nice and flat so that you don't have a high spot there. And it'll also get, tell you what, what the curvature of these heels are. If you notice this heel here, it has a... It has a slightly different curvature to it than this one on this side. And if you recall in the videotapes that we have, you'll remember that we said that the heel that has the most curve to it is always the tallest heel. So in light of that, I'm going to look at this foot with the idea that I can take a certain amount away. Now that, in my previous years, would have made no sense at all. 
Mother Nature says this side is breaking away, this one's not, so maybe this is the tall side. And if you look at it from the perspective of the soul plane, you'll see very clearly that this area actually has just a slight more wall height to it than this side because we're right on the sole right there on this side and there's a bit of a wall that's slightly higher this heel being slightly curved tells me it's a little bit taller so i'm going to take it down as i take that down you can see how this heel straightens very similar to that one right there doesn't take much, especially with these heels that want to grow forward. And I'm going to just rasp a little bit to get this flat so I have equal contact all the way around the sole, around the front of this foot. And with this procedure that we've been doing with these hind feet, we're finding that breakover underneath the tip of the coffin bone seems to be the most efficient. And so that basically is going to mean break over right about one inch ahead of the tip of, of the frog right there. If we can get, get this done, the proportions then are shorter in the front and greater in the back. As we've rasped this down, we've actually lengthened these two caudal proportions here. You can see how cleaning that out has allowed me the opportunity to get that heel nice and flat. I haven't taken a whole lot off, but I don't want that heel to stand up there and take an extra amount of load. I think, that, I think it's real important when we look at these feet, uh, in order to get a good perception of, of what this type foot means to uh, its natural conformation, I think we want to map it out even more closely than we have by finding the widest part. I mean, one might tend to think, well, maybe that widest part is there. But by looking straight down, by drawing this line as we've done, then moving the tool or whatever the measuring device exactly over, you can use this as a, as a guide to keep it aligned and actually see where you're at on this side here as well as this side. We're going to rasp a bit more of the flare off this lateral toe and uh, one would say, well, gosh, he's already deficient there. But really, if you look at it from this perspective, he's not. There's a good deal more width to that foot here than there is on this side here. And even in this toe area, you see how the toe above this line is actually showing beyond the rasp. And it's not on this side here. So we're going to just even this up, get, uh, get rid of some of that uh, distortion, and then fit him up with a shoe. and. Uh, Hopefully move the break over back and get these proportions at least 50-50 and hopefully a greater amount in the back. Okay. We've got a little bit of a, of a flare right in this corner right here. And I think if you, this, this side has been previously trimmed and, and nicely done, just wasn't quite enough taken off of this side here. So I'm just going to using the upper part of my hoof as a guide. I'll be able to make this uniform as this side here is. So this is very typical of pigeon-toed feet as well that have a similar conformation. Highly misunderstood creates extreme joint problems, particularly on the front feet where they fulcrum over the top of it. There's not as much forgiveness on the front as there is the back. But quite often, unless we look at the flares, how they are stretching from one side to the other. We never really get a true appreciation of what that true co hoof conformation is. So I insist on, on grooming the flares moderately, not excessively. There, seems to, there needs to be at least a uniform wall thickness all the way around the foot. And you can assess that by simply using the upper part of the wall as a guide when you grasp these flares away and just touch here, there, and around the foot to see that it's uh, uh, taken care of properly. Double check it on the bottom. We'll see that the wall is uniform now. And uh, now we're ready to fit our shoe to that. All right, we've come back and we double checked here. This wall was over rasped just a little bit. So this is what we like to see. About a quarter of an inch of wall thickness on most of these no uh, feet from aughts to number twos. The thing that I'm looking at is the 
is the amount of sole contact with the rasp here and see that it's the same there. I want the same amount of, of wall height, the gap below the, the uh, rasp here as I do on this side. Now mind you, part of this is broken away so you have to use a general perception of the whole foot to get this uh, as close as you can. So we're going to set that shoe on there so the breakover occurs right about there and uh, hopefully we can help this boy out. Okay, in order to get this shoe to fit back there, we have to broaden the toe right out. And you can do this with any type shoe, St. Croix, Kirkhart, or uh, Diamond, it doesn't make any difference. It just is, so happens that how we got onto this is by using the, the natural balance shoes on the hind foot. And that seems to work real well simply because it's already broad at the toe and with very little alterations we're able to move the heel slightly and get this horse's foot bisected as you can see with a greater distance now instead of where it was before being this the, the heel position before this being nearly twice as long as it was there. We've been able to nearly increase or change this uh, these ratios by 180 degrees and we're finding this is extremely helpful to these horses. Now, I'm, I'm level with the sole here on the wall and to be sure that I'm not going to get sole pressure, I'm going to hot seat this just so that this sole will shrink just slightly more than the outer wall. That's typical, there's more moisture in this. So by hot seating this fairly aggressively, I'm going to ensure that I don't have sole pressure and I insist that people do this, particularly if you have touched the, sole, the rasp with the sole. I think it's very important that you hot seat it or minimize that height. That's all the time we have this week. Please join us next week as we hot seat this foot and finish up the shoe application. We will then reevaluate this horse's movement and see if we were able to make some improvement. If you would like more information or a free two-hour DVD, please call us or visit nbhoofcare.com. Welcome back to the Natural Balance Hoof Care Corner. We will continue where we left off last time working on this horse with base narrow hind end and some traveling issues. If you remember, this horse tended to fall off the lateral toe and had some stifle, hawk, and back pain because of it. We've finished mapping out the foot and trimming it. We are now ready to hot seat and finish applying the shoe. I think when, you're t when we're talking about hot seating, we're, we want to be fairly hot with that. As you can see, there's plenty of red with that shoe. We're going to be hot and fast. We don't want to leave it on there very long. You actually will have less chance of, of heating the foot up too much with a hotter shoe as long as you don't leave it on very long. If you have a cooler shoe and leave it on longer to get the job done, then you're going to end up creating a serious problem. So we're going to put this on, get next to the frog here, rub that back and forth like so. And what we're doing, there we go. Now we've hit these two pillar areas and you can see them pop out. That's a pillar right there and there's a pillar right there and it ends right about where we want our line to be. So for this foot right here, that looks like it's a it's a good choice to get that breakover in that condition, especially in performance horses. Keep in mind, horses' feet naturally wear short in the toe with no rider or no activities beyond traveling from food to water. And it's when we ask our horses to do extraordinary things, it seems as though, as we've been taught, uh, oftentimes this toe gets longer than it should be, when in fact we should be considering how the foot wears naturally and then even uh, bringing it back closer to the, uh, to the fulcrum of the uh, navicular bone uh, to ensure that uh, these horses are, are more comfortable and can actually do a better job of uh, what we ask them to do. Generally, the shoe fits very nicely with the inside edge of the toe right at or over the top of the apex of the frog. Once we have it positioned there, it's nice to use this stand to nail with and support the horse. You can either use primary holes or put the nails next to each other. I still like to keep the feet keep the nails as far forward as possible so that's uh, I have no problems using these 
nails one next to the other. All right, we'll just finish this up here. And you'll notice that there's, there's a fair amount of toe that's over the front. And I'll show you how, how to deal with that. Get these other side done up here. The thing that we found is most important is the angle of that rasp should be just nearly the same as this front slope on the shoe which is about 10 degrees actually. You just rasp underneath of it like this. It'll make a little contact with the shoe just to see that you've got it back there as far as you need to. Keep in mind I've already got the dorsal wall dressed as much as I need to. I don't need to take any more off of that. It's already straight. If I want to smooth it up a bit, that's fine. But all in all, it's just a matter of just undercutting this. It has a normal configuration, but it's just rolled and it'll wear back even more as time goes on. The more you use this aggressively, because it's in a more efficient place, the more he's going to wear that front of that shoe back there as well. The thing that we don't see is the ha there's that extreme lateral hock movement. He's very much wider. Uh, and uh, more stable in the ground. He's able to get over his foot much easier. There's no turning around the end of that toe now. It's all back underneath of him. That toe is broader, yet it's still not square. It still gives him a good surface to roll around. And if there's any lateral movement, his foot is actually reaching out laterally to get to the ground. We expect this to improve as time goes on, even though his confirmation is limited to how much of this actually can be uh, overcome if it needs to be overcome. The thing that's important is, is that, this, that while this horse is doing his job, he doesn't have that extreme leverage and that toe to pass over or go around when he's trying to um, rope stairs or jump fences or run barrels, whatever. We're seeing a more uniform support through the lateral, medial lateral branches here. You can see here, you can see here this branch and this branch seem to be bearing equal weight. You'd think this would be really bizarre because we actually lowered the lateral heel just a little bit in order to get the foot to balance out from the sole plane. And you can see that there's equal support through the toe and it's not so much to the lateral toe. Still gonna have some out there, but nevertheless, we've managed to balance this out. Each hoof print, as you see down the row here, are slightly to the outside, and they're all consistent with, with this footprint here. This one seems to give us even more support through the medial toe, actually, and more inline. You can see the dirt that's kicked up as he's come over the top of that is more uniform in front of him, as well as the next hoof print and on down the line. So he's at least walking to the lateral side of his foot for the most part and he's bearing more weight you know, comfortably across that toe simply because he's, he's got some of that uh, leverage reduced. We're taking a look at, his, uh, look at this project from a side view now and this is very common with how we've positioned that shoe in relationship to P3. They, uh, if they are short strided behind, stab their toes in the ground, this is proven to be the best way to create a situation to increase the length of their stride, get them to land heel first. And you'll, if you watch his pelvis now, you'll see how it tucks underneath him. His back will arch slightly with each step. And this seems to be very helpful to the especially to the dressage riders because it'll help them to round their back up a bit and support the weight of the rider and actually make their whole body more comfortable. The longer the stride underneath, the more they're able to support that weight of the rider, where in contrast to that, if the stride is not long, they stick their toes in the ground, they absorb the shock through the sacrum, and uh, therefore the back tends to suffer as a result of that. So 
accomplishing a lot of different things here. Increasing the stride length, engaging the back of the foot, and, and, and reducing the lever that causes the uh, lateral movement of the hawk and stifle.